Hello and welcome to Banana Box 2023 for Mac. In this video, we're going to have an in-depth look at all of the new features in Banana Box 2023 for Mac, and we're also going to check out a lot of the new content. First though, I'm going to give you a brief overview of the new Real Tracks and other content, a quick look at some of the new features, and then I'll delve into more detail with those new features later in the video. We've been busy and added over 70 new features and an amazing collection of new content, including 222 real tracks and real drums, 20 more than we've released in previous versions. There are also new MIDI super tracks, including a set that utilizes the new Synthmaster plugin, which is now included with Band in a Box 2023. There are new instrumental studies. We've added more songs with vocals, artist performances, with brand new original songs featuring 50 new artist performance band in a box song files with accompanying audio vocal tracks. There are new extra styles packs, 14 and 15. And X Pro Styles Pack 4 with 100 brand new styles, great for everyone, but specifically designed to work for our Pro and Mega Pack users, with new reel tracks and reel drums added as well. Also for our Pro and Mega Pack users, we have Real Combos Booster with 45 new real tracks and real drums and lots of styles to go with them. New Look Ma More MIDI style sets. Playable Real Tracks Set 2 with 404 new sounds which allow you to customize the real tracks performances with the exact notes you want. Playable Real Drums Set 1 has also been added, so the same playable tracks you've been able to use with real tracks can now also be used with drums. There are two new sets of real drum stems, which allow you to access the individual wave files from each different mic used to record many of our most popular real drums. And all playable real tracks and real drums now have audio demos. We have bonus packs with 60 additional new real tracks, 20 more than we've released in previous versions. So in total, an amazing 282 new real tracks and real drums are available. In addition, there are over 100 new real styles that use the new real tracks. These include new jazz, fusion, and funk styles that feature legendary drummer Mike Clark. We have lots of requested blues styles, including new guitar and harmonica with Pat Bergeson. More blues organ soloing with Charles Treadway. Lap Steel with Rob Ikes and Eddie Dunlap. And more blues electric guitar soloing with Nashville great Johnny Highland. We've also expanded our Bossa Piano soloing with styles using both soloing and left hand comping. There are also exciting new funky soul horn section styles. Great to use with the brand new Real Track Stems feature that allows you to use the individual voices from the main style. In previous versions, you could use the individual voices but not have them play in sync together as an ensemble. There are new modern funk drums and guitar. and requested Latin pop styles. In the pop, rock, and world category, we've added many requested Southern Soul drums, guitar, and bass. There's new gritty rock harmonica with Pat Bergeson. There are also requested prog rock styles. as well as 80s new wave guitars. There are new exciting boogie and gospel piano with Nashville great Kevin McKendry. There are vocal doo-wop styles, which also utilize the new Real Track Stems feature, allowing you to have the ensemble performance, but with the individual voices that make up the ensemble. There are also requested metal styles featuring new drums, basses, and guitar. And the guitars were all recorded in all 12 keys, meaning Band in a Box does not need to use any pitch shifting on the audio, making for a more consistent tone no matter what chords you enter and no matter what key you're in. And we've also included requested world styles, expanding our collection of sitar, tabla, and dolak. 
For country Americana and Celtic, we've greatly expanded our extremely popular producer explosive country guitar styles with three sets of radio-friendly guitars from Nashville legend Brent Mason, designed to be layered into a polished, produced sound. We've also added requested auto harp styles, more contradance piano and guitar, and more indie folk singer-songwriter styles. And even more Johnny Highland with a collection of new country soloists. And there are over 70 new features in Band in a Box 2023. This includes many major new features such as partial track regenerations. By simply typing Command F8, I can instantly regenerate this highlighted region. And if I'm still not happy, I can keep going. And new features ensure it's different every time I regenerate. There's also an Option F8 on-screen regeneration panel with additional options which can remain on screen while you continue to select different regions. And this partial regeneration feature also works in the notation window, piano roll window, or any window that allows you to select a region. Playable tracks are enhanced for playable reel tracks with over 400 added for a total of over 700 playable reel tracks. And the playable tracks feature also now includes playable reel drums, MIDI super tracks, and MIDI tracks. There are now reel track stems, which are separate isolated tracks available for multi-track recordings like horns, for example, crooner and blues, vocals, and string quartets. Master track volume automation has been added, perfect for things like crescendos and fade outs. And we've added audio input monitoring to hear your audio input through your selected track. For example, this slide guitar that I'm playing through my audio interface. And I'm hearing the effects from the track. Synthmaster Player Synth is now included with great modern pop and EDM sounds as well as arpeggiator sounds with chord track features added to Band in a Box to help you use them effectively. And there are lots of other great features, including great new features in the DAW plugins, such as drum stems, color schemes, artist performances and user-created audio loading, and more. So before I delve into the new features, for those of you who may not be familiar with Band in a Box, I'll give you a brief overview of how it works. Band in a Box is an auto accompaniment program that allows you to type in any chord progression in any key and it generates backing tracks for you. This is an amazing tool for practicing, songwriting, composing, teaching, and music production. And that's what you're hearing right now. Everything you're hearing here was created simply by typing in these chords, picking the style, setting the tempo, and pressing play. Band in a Box then did everything, and you can enter any chord progression in any key. I'll highlight this by making a few changes to the chord chart here. So for example, at the beginning, I will maybe just have G for the whole bar, and then I'll go to the flat seven chord in the key of G, which is F. I'll delete this chord here. And then maybe C, and then E minor, and I'll delete this one here. Then I'll do the same thing for the next four bars. And, but maybe I'll leave that D chord there. And then I'll leave the E minor, but I'll delete the other chord so the E minor lasts for a full two bars. And then same with this A minor, it'll last for a full two bars. And then maybe I'll change the key of the entire song and I'll change it to C. So now all the chords have been transposed. I'll increase the tempo maybe a little bit. And I'll press the play and generate button and we'll see how it sounds now.
I'm going to use this file right now to explore one of the most exciting new features in Bound in a Box 2023, partial regeneration. So with partial track regeneration, you can now regenerate sections of real tracks by simply highlighting the section and pressing F8. This generates a different part each time, so you can keep regenerating to find the best replacement. So I'll demonstrate that with this one right now. So let me just play the beginning here again. Okay, so I like the first two bars there, but maybe I want to try something different for bars three and four. So I've highlighted those two bars, and now it's the soloist that I want to regenerate. So I'm going to make sure I click on the soloist track here, and now I'll just press F8. So it's regenerating the part. So there you go, it was a completely different part for these two bars. And I'll try that again. Here, let me just press F8 again. So it'll now regenerate an even different part. So I think I like the last one better. So another thing with the partial regeneration is that they're fully undoable. So I'll just undo the, that last generation there. So this is now not going back to the way it was originally. This is now going back to when I first regenerated it. And let me listen to that now. So I've loaded another song file to show you another example of this, but this time I'm going to do it in the audio edit window. Basically this feature works in any window where you can select a region, so notation, piano roll, as we saw the chord sheet, and now I'm going to show you it in the audio edit window. So here I have a jazz style loaded with a tenor sax solo. Let me just go back here uh, and I'll listen to a little bit of the solo game here. All right, so I really liked everything up until this point, and from there it was still pretty good as well, but I think this little section here is what I want to regenerate. So I've highlighted that region just by clicking and dragging over the region I wanted to select. And again, I'm just going to press F8. All right, so I'm actually just going to press F8 again and regenerate it another time. All right, so I think I'll keep it like that. Also, if I zoom into this area here, I had only actually highlighted starting here but there was a new little pickup note selected here as well. So that's another feature, and that's something that you can change in the settings, which we'll look at in a minute. All right, so I loaded up one of our new prog rock styles, and I loaded this to show some other ways you can use the partial regeneration. Now with the last example, I used F8 to do an instant regeneration. But now I'm gonna press Option F8, and that brings up this dialog here. If you want a more customized approach to regenerating these sections, this is a good way to do it. Basically, pressing F8 like I did before is like being in this dialog and pressing OK Regenerate. Now in those past examples when I regenerated the parts, it replaced what was there already, which obviously is what I wanted. There was a sax solo for a few bars and I wanted to replace the soloing with brand new material. But there are also some options where instead of replacing it, you're basically just adding on to it. So I'm going to go into the options here. And first we'll just have a look at all of the partial regenerate options. So for starters, we have allow lead in, which means that the riffs may start a little bit before the exact region you selected, like I pointed out earlier. 
that kind of helps the feature be a little more musical in that it's going to generate parts that are more coherent. Generate an extra beat is a similar thing, but for the end. Now here, overwrite replace existing. That's what I was talking about. In most cases, you would want to replace what's there, but I'm going to show you one possible use for merging, which is what will happen if this is off. For this song, when it goes to the B section, I'm going to try and thicken up the rhythm guitar. So it's going to generate the same part, but it will be different material. So it will be all of a sudden like two guitars are playing very similar parts instead of one. At least that's the goal here. So I removed the check from that for that reason. Autoplay is an option, of course. In the previous examples, when I've pressed F8 and done this, it started playback right away so that I could hear it, which of course is what I wanted. But you can turn that off if you want to. But I will leave that on. And then there are some options for allowing riffs to be the same or different. So if you select this, allow some duplicate riffs, that means that when you're regenerating a part, it's okay if some of the phrases will be exactly the same. So that might be an option if you don't mind hearing the same thing again, but maybe in a slightly different context. This one here is to specify just the start if you just want to make sure the start of the section you're regenerating is different, but you don't mind if the rest of it then uses some of the same material. And that's generally the one I prefer to use. And this is what you'd select if you want to make sure that every part of what you're regenerating is completely different. But as I said, I think I'll keep this setting here. So now you can enter the range you want to regenerate here either by typing it in, or if I move this down and I just highlight these bars here, you can see this area is now populated with the area that I highlighted. Bar 9 and the number of bars I highlighted was 8. The currently selected guitar is Guitar 2. So when I press OK Regenerate, because of the settings I selected, it's going to basically double the part that was already there. So there you can see, for the B section there, it was the entire thing was a lot thicker sounding. And so I'm going to leave those settings in there, but I'll select Guitar 1. And you can see when I clicked it in the mixer, it's updated it here as well. And I'm going to try the same thing then with Guitar 1. Yeah, so now the B section is even more full, and whereas I started with just two guitars, guitar one and guitar two, I've now doubled each of those, so basically we now have four guitars playing through this section. So I loaded this soul style, and I put this horn section on it, it's just a very simple, repeated rhythmic part. That's what this particular reel track does. It plays the alto sax, two tenors, and baritone sax, playing just this very simple, syncopated part. And we have a few styles like that that do just very basic rhythms like that. And that's exactly what I want for the first four bars of this song. But then I want to do something cooler and funkier, starting at bar five. So I want simple for the first four bars and then cool and funky starting at bar five. So I'm going to switch to a real track that is a soul horn section with some really cool funky parts. And I'm going to use partial regeneration to do that. So I will select this track and I'll just stay in the chord chart for this one. And so I'll highlight these eight bars here. Now I'm going to do the option F8 again to bring up this dialogue. Now normally when you use F8 or you use Option F8 and go in here, it's just going to regenerate the part that's already on that track. That's the main reel track. However, you can select an alternate reel track. So first of all, I'll press All so that it shows all options and then I'll go Soul Horn Section. And this is the one here that I had in mind. Horn section, background, soul funky Chris, 
even 105. So that alternate reel track is now showing up here. And because I already highlighted the chord chart, it's showing me the correct range of starting at bar five and going for eight bars. And so now I'll go, okay, regenerate. All right, and now I'm going to use this same part that we created here to show some other new features, and that's the copying, pasting, erasing, those types of functions here. So that's not regenerating new parts, but just doing some editing to the file here. And one of the great things about these editing features in Band in a Box 2023 is that they do not force the writing of a new WAV file. In previous versions of Band in a Box, you could do these types of edits, but as soon as you made the edit, it would write the entire track to a WAV file, and then that's associated with the Band in a Box file. And a WAV file is, you know, it's not a huge file, but it is a large file, and that all adds up. But now, all of that is just saved right in the Band in a Box file, and it retains its small file size. So that's a very significant thing with this new type of editing here. And I'm going to show you that right now. So in the audio edit window, you can see here, this is the part where it was just the simplistic part. And then here is where it started the cooler, funkier part. I'll just zoom out a little more. And then you can see here, it goes back to the simplistic part. And I'll zoom back in here. Now, what I was thinking is that for that simplistic part further along in the file, I'd like to keep it like that, but maybe just accentuate certain bars with a few fun licks. So let me check out this here uh, at bar eight, the F7 and the A minor chord here. All right, so I'm gonna highlight that whole little lick there. And it's over the F7 and the A minor chord. I'm just gonna press the copy button right in the option F8 dialog here. So now that I've copied it to the clipboard, that has also activated these options, paste, paste merge, paste relative, paste multiple. So paste would just be a direct paste wherever I highlight in the file. Paste merge would be kind of like the example with the prog rock style, where it adds on to what's already there. Paste multiple would be if you want to have multiple copies of it in a row. But what I wanna use is paste relative, which means that wherever I paste it, it will be in those new bars, but it will be the same position within those bars that it is here in bars eight and nine. So I'm just gonna zoom out again, and I'm gonna go further into the file. And here we have an F7 and an A minor again. Now in this part, it's just playing those simple, those simple little stabs. Here, I'll play it again from here. So I'm just going to highlight a region and I don't need to be really careful about exactly where I'm clicking on and I'm going to paste relative. And let's check that out. All right, so this little bit here, this little bit here was part of that simple riff before. So I'm just gonna highlight that and I'm gonna press erase to remove that. And again, when I mentioned before about doing this kind of editing and it not having to create new WAV files, same with using erase or delete. So let me play it now again from here. And I think I'll remove this part as well. 
And now let me listen to this whole section here. Now, this is a good time to mention as well, in addition to this new features video, we also have a couple of boot camp videos where we take an even deeper dive into some of these new features. The partial regeneration is one of those that gets the full deep dive treatment in our Ban in a Box 2023 Boot Camp 1 video. I'm going to play a little clip for you from that right now, and I'll probably play some clips from those boot camp videos throughout this video as well. And you can find links to the full videos in the comments below. So I can do some regenerating if I want to uh, regenerate any of the parts in this. So I'll just look at the uh, regular view here without the automation now. And let's just see what the solo is sounding like at that part right now, just as it is. So many people trying to make the... All right, so I think I do want to regenerate that again. So I'll highlight the region. I'll do the option F8 thing again, and uh, I'll just keep this floating window up on top here. And I'll use this to sort of navigate my way through this. So first of all, I'll just hit OK Regenerate. In the crowd, yet you feel so all alone. So that was sounding okay, but I think I'll just keep regenerating until something really stands out to me that I really want to keep. So last year with Ban in a Box 2022, we introduced playable reel tracks. This allowed you to use reel tracks, but you could switch between the reel track and MIDI notes that you could edit, but that MIDI would be using sounds that specifically went with those particular reel tracks. So you'd basically be combining the great reel tracks that we made with world-class musicians, along with the ability to enter specific notes yourself on the track. With Band in a Box 2023, we've done the same with reel drums. We've added playable reel drums as well as playable MIDI and playable MIDI super tracks, which we'll look at later. We basically now just call the feature playable tracks since it encompasses all of these things. So right now we're listening to a new style that we made with drummer Mike Clark. He's probably most famous for being Herbie Hancock's drummer with his Headhunters band. So we did two sets with Mike Clark. The first is Funk and Fusion, and then we did one that's straight ahead jazz, but with a modern take on it, both with sticks and brushes. And that's what we're listening to right now, a jazz waltz modern brushes style that we made with Mike Clark. So I wanted to use this song file as an example of what you can do with playable reel drums. Now I've already added some playable reel tracks in this. Uh, when I was listening to it earlier, I noticed the guitar playing a really cool little lick at bar eight. And so I added playable reel tracks to the bass tracks and then put in specific notes to play at bar eight. I'll show you that right now. So here's the bass track and I'll go to bar eight. So here's the bass track being shown in the piano roll window. So all of these items in here are notes but the ones that are colored black are not actually audible. During those parts, we're hearing the real track, but the notes are displaying here just for notation purposes. So if I start playback from here, but these green notes here, those are the playable notes that I added. And so I put a mute region here so that the real track itself would stop and we'd just be hearing these playable notes that I added in here, specifically so that the bass would be playing a cool thing to go along with the guitar. I'll just play that one more time here. All 
All right, so I want to do a similar thing with the drums. So I'm going to switch to the drums track here. Now again, we have these black notes in here, which we're not hearing. We're hearing the actual real drum style that we made with Mike Clark. Uh, but these are here for notation purposes. Like if I click on the notation button here, we can see those same notes displayed in notation. But I'm going to go back to the piano roll window because I like actually working in here. So I'll go back to that bar again and let's see what the drums are actually doing here at bar 8. Alright, so it's already playing a cool little triplet thing in here that already kind of goes with the guitar. But I think I'd still like to put a custom part in here. Now with playable tracks there are two approaches. You can turn off the corresponding real drums or real tracks and put your own new notes in instead. But another way you can do it is actually add to what's already there. So first of all, I will select playable track for this one. And I'll pick this jet and I'll pick this brushes jazz modern. And so what I was thinking I would do here is just on the third triplet of each of these three beats, I think I want to add like a open hat or a symbol of some kind. So I'm just going to add a note. And maybe I'll do that. I'll just add that there and then on the third triplet here and the third triplet there. So let's hear what that sounds like now. All right, so that was kind of cool. I think those were a bit loud, so I'm going to highlight them. Now here's another new feature, is that when those notes are highlighted, you can see down here is the velocity. And the notes that I highlighted up here are also highlighted down here. Now, there is a feature that existed previously in Band in a Box in, in that you could draw a line across the velocity of several notes and then it would change the velocity to that for those notes. But the new feature is that if you have some notes selected, it's going to leave all the other notes behind and only affect the ones that are selected. So I can draw a line across these three notes and you can see those velocities are now lower because of the line I drew across. Let's hear how that sounds now. All right, so that was kind of cool. Um, I think maybe now I will add a mute region here. And I'll just put in the entire part that I want in here. So I'll play this again. So now it's muted the drums and it's also removed all of the, the black notes that were under there. So now I can add my own. So maybe I'll put in some brushes here. And I'll add some a brush swirl here. And maybe I'll put a kick on the second triplet of each of those groups of three. Let's see how that sounds. All right, so that was sounding pretty good, but I think it has the same issues as before. The new notes that I added are too loud. So I'm gonna do the same thing, highlight those notes, and then draw a line across the velocities at the bottom. So they're all now a lot quieter and I'll play that back. All right, so that seems to have done the trick. That now is sounding really good to me and I'm very happy with that part. And now I think I'm gonna to switch to the Bootcamp 1 video again and show you a little excerpt from that which has another example of playable real drums being used. But there's something else I think that I'd like to have the drums do. I don't want to have the drums just playing a fill throughout the entire thing. So I'm going to use playable tracks in the drums as well. And that's a new feature with Band in a Box 2023, playable real drums. So I'll turn on playable track.
Now, in this case, really all I wanted the playable track for is to get a single crash. I'd like a crash to be played at the downbeat of bar 72. And I want that to hold, but then I want halfway through, I want the regular fill that's it's already part of the real drums part to come back in. So I'm going to zoom in to bar 72 again here. Okay, so I want to put a mute region here, starting right at the very beginning of the bar. And I want it to only last for the first half of the bar here. So before I now even add any notes at all, I just want to hear what that sounds like. So what I should be hearing is bar 71, I'll be hearing the real drums. Beats 1 and 2 of bar 72, I should hear nothing because I've put this mute region here. And then at beat 3, I'll hear the drums come in. And because there's a part marker at 73, what I'll hear is the drums doing a fill. So let's just see if that's what I am hearing right now. Perfect. So it was just silence for the drums there, and then the fill that the drums were already playing came back in there. So now I'd actually just like to add a crash with a playable note here on the drums track. And so I know that a C sharp there is a crash, but uh, you can also just add a note and then just move it around <laughs> until you hear a crash. If you're not, if you're unsure where the drum notes are. And actually, I'm not totally sure where the kick is. Probably here, because that's what's, uh, there was probably a kick there. So let me add a kick here. Yeah, that's, that was right for a kick there. And this crash, I will just make it last longer, right up to where the fill will start then. So let's see how that sounds now. All right, I want that a little bit quieter. That, that crash was a little bit too loud, I think. Um, although the kick was probably fine. So I'm actually gonna use another new feature that if I only select one note, because I, I had both of those I had both of those notes selected already. But if I only select one of them, then if I move this line over the velocity area here, it's only going to affect the one that was selected. So the kick will still be louder. So this line here is probably the kick. And then this line down here, if you can see it, is uh, is the reduced crash level. So let's see how that sounds now. Down in the desert where I grew up. We're now going to have a look at Synthmaster, which is now included with Band in a Box 2023. Synthmaster Player is an award winning synth by KV331 Audio, which has thousands of presets that are especially useful for modern pop, EDM, and other similar genres. This file I have loaded, which is one of our new Songs with Vocals artist performances, is using four different instances of Synthmaster. Another really cool thing about Synthmaster is that there are a lot of arpeggiator sounds, and I'm going to play a clip now from the Bootcamp 2 video, where I explore Synthmaster and use another great new feature, Write Chord Tracks. All right, so now I want to add another track. So I'm going to bring in another one here. And I'd like this to be a Synthmaster track as well, but now I want a chording track. And to get that, I'm going to use a new feature under Edit MIDI, Generate Chord Track on this track. What this is going to do is it's just going to write very basic block chords over all of the chords that I've entered in my song here. So I'll go through all of the items in this dialog here. First of all, the channel number in this case is kind of irrelevant. Any channels that we send to Synthmaster are just going to play whatever sound happens to be loaded. So, so really this could be anything. I'll just leave it at nine since it's already set to that, but it could be easily be changed to one, two or whatever. For velocity, all of the MIDI notes that are going to be created from this dialog will all have the same velocity. I'm just going to leave this at 90. I don't think this is going to make too much of a difference for the synth master sounds, so 90 is perfectly fine. And I can always change it later. 
Now here, the note range to output. This shows the lowest note that it's gonna use for these block chords and the highest note that it will use. And there's a little guide here indicating that middle C is 60. So then C sharp above would be 61, D would be 62, et cetera, et cetera. So for example, if I wanted this to be middle C and above, I could just enter this. There's an option for root always on the bottom. I definitely don't wanna select that. This option I mentioned earlier, I'm gonna start off just using basic triads and sevenths. So as I pointed out when I was entering the chords then, with this setting like this, the F minor nine will not actually play the nine, the B2 will not actually play the two, etc. Further in the video, I will actually set this to more complex, but I just wanted to show this setting right now. The number of ticks before the chord change to output. Now the feature itself is just gonna write block chords wherever there's an actual chord change. And right now with this set to zero, it's gonna put it exactly at the bar or beat line wherever the chord is. Now, depending on what kind of sound you're using, if it's something like a synth pad that has a very slow attack, it might actually be kind of nice to have the MIDI be triggered before the beat line. And so you might wanna have a value here that would play it a little bit early to sort of give it a chance to swell into the chord. Um, but I don't really know what I'm gonna pick yet. So really right now for me, I just wanna leave it at zero. So it'll play exactly where the chord occurs in the chart. And I don't want any kind of chords during the lead in. So I will now just press write chords. Now I'll show you what it generated here by clicking on the piano roll. So there you go, here are all of the chords. For example, on the E7 here, it has a D, which is the seventh, an E, a G sharp, and a B. And I selected root is not always at the bottom, which is why it allowed the seventh, the D, to be at the bottom here. I'm gonna scroll back a little bit and have a look at some of these other chords. The B2 chord, for example, it has a D sharp, which is the third, an F sharp, which is the fifth, and the B, which is the root. But the two in the B2 chord would be C sharp, and that's not included, again, because of that setting. So if I was to play this right now, it would just be using the default MIDI synth to play this, probably a piano sound. And so before I play it, I wanna actually load a synth master sound. So before we saw loading a MIDI super tracks that had an associated synth master sound, but now we've already got the MIDI here and I just wanna load a synth master sound. So I'm gonna click on this track. I'll go to select MIDI instrument and select HiQ MIDI patch plugin. So this dialog includes all of our older high Q or high quality MIDI sounds. It also includes all of the playable real tracks sounds that we added last year and then more this year as well. It also includes playable real drums, which are brand new in Band in a Box 2023. In the first bootcamp video, you can see me using some of these new playable real drums. But then this dialogue can also load some specific synth master sounds. So again, like I did in the other dialogues, I'll just type synth master. So again, like in the other dialogues, I can just double click on some of these to hear a sample of what they're gonna sound like. When I double click on it, I will first hear the instrument by itself, and then I'll hear it in the context of a full band.
I'll just explain a little bit about the naming conventions in these as well. The BA or BS indicates that it's a bass sound, although even bass sounds can sound pretty cool as pads as well if you just use them in the, the higher register. Then there are some that are specifically pads, and you can see these are named with pad. And the ones that have AR or ARP in the title use arpeggiator features within the plugin itself. So what that means is that if Band in a Box sends the plugin just block chords played over a specific period of time, the sound is not just going to play single notes that will hold for the duration of the chord. It will use the arpeggiator features on that MIDI that's being fed to it. The end result will be very different depending on what sound is being used. In some cases, it will actually create arpeggios in the traditional meaning of the word in that all of the notes that are being fed to it, it will stagger them and go up and down or play a particular pattern with those notes broken up rather than in a single block. With some other sounds, it might just play them in a rhythmic pattern, which isn't technically an arpeggio, but it's still using the arpeggiator features within the plugin. The upshot is that if you pick anything with AR or ARP in it, it's not just going to play what you feed it, it's going to do something interesting. And this last one that I clicked on, AR Melodic Wave, is one of those. So I think I'd like to actually try that one over these block chords. So you can see these are the block chords here that are being fed to the plugin, but clearly it's not just playing those. Let me solo this track again. And I'll show you the plugin for it as well. And you can see in the piano here, it's showing you the notes that are being played rather than just the block chords that are being input into it. So that was really cool. I quite enjoyed what it came up with there. That it's doing the thing where it plays an octave higher for part of it. I think it might be more effective if I lowered the notes, like I did in the last one. Now with the previous one, I actually regenerated the whole chord track. But with this one, I'm actually going to use another new tool where you can change the octave of notes without actually regenerating anything at all. So I'll click on this track, again go to Edit MIDI. But instead of going to generate chord track, I'm just going to go adjust octave of notes to fit note range. So when you select this, it's kind of in two parts. First you enter the low end of the range and then you enter the high end. So I don't think I need to go down a whole octave. I think I'm going to enter 55 as the low end of my range here. And then it's automatically entered an octave above that, so I'll just hit OK for the high range there. So there you go, now you can see that some of the notes are below middle C, some are still higher than middle C, but it's just lowered the whole thing a little bit. So let me play it again now. All right, I'm back now at the same song that I was looking at before I switched to that clip there. This song, As If I Could Get Away. And I wanted to use this to demonstrate more of the playable tracks feature. Earlier in the video, I showed playable real tracks and playable real drums. And I also mentioned at that time that you could also use the same feature with MIDI tracks or MIDI super tracks. So I'm going to do that with this bass part right now. So I'll just solo the bass and the drums so you can kind of hear the part. Now, it's a cool, funky bass part, and it's using this cool BA jazz bass synth master sound. But now there's a part here for the chorus that I think I want it to be a little bit different than what the MIDI super track is, has created here. So that cool, funky part was great up until there, and I mean, it was still sounding great in here, but I think I want to simplify it a little bit for this part here. So again, I'm going to go into the piano roll for this part right here. So you can see there we are at bar 25. So first of all, I will enable playable track. So it's not prompting me to load a MIDI sound now because this already is a MIDI track, so it's already got a plugin loaded, 
which of course is the sound I want to continue using. But I still have the other features from playable tracks, such as create mute region. So I'm going to create a mute region over all of bars 25 and 26. And I'll just go back. So if I now start playback from here, all of these notes in here are going to disappear. So now I can start adding my own notes in here. So I can set kind of the default of what I want them to be. I want it to snap to the quarter note and I want them all to have a duration of a quarter note. I think I want here just a simple ascending quarter note bass line going up and then going down on the F minor seven chord here. So the chord here is A. So I'll start uh, by adding an A right here. Maybe I'll put it an octave up. And then I'll basically just do an arpeggio up. And then I'll do an arpeggio down over the F sharp minor. So F sharp, I'll add a C sharp here, um, an A, which is the third of uh, F sharp minor, and then down to an F sharp here. So I'll play that now and we'll see how that sounds. And then it goes back into the cool syncopated funky part there, which I think is perfect. Let me just bring all the other instruments back in and we can hear how that now sounds in the mix. Another new feature in Banner Box 2023 is master volume automation. So again, we're going to go to Bootcamp 1 and check out a little excerpt from that. All right, so there is a final thing that I'm going to do, and that is to add a fade there. So once the chorus is over and the guitar solo starts, I'm then going to start a final fade out. So fade outs are something that you could do in Band in a Box in the past. Uh, the F5 bar settings dialog, you could use that to, to do fades although they were a little clunky in that it's it was just every single bar, it just decreased by a certain uh, dB. Then last year when we introduced volume automation, you could go to every single track and put in volume automation to do a fade out, but that's pretty cumbersome. Uh, but now new with Band in a Box 2023, we've added the master track where you can do volume automation that will affect the entire thing. So that makes a fade out much easier to do because I can just do it to this track here. So let me just play back and see when I want to start the fade here. Okay, so I think I want to start the fade more or less at bar 105 and the end of the song, the, the two bar ending starts at bar 113. So I want to have it all the way out at some point by 113. So let me just see how that sounds if I put a node here and then I just put another node here and just drag it out there. Let's see how this sounds with just a direct fade from there to there. All right, I think that's a fairly good distance, but fades don't usually sound as good if it's just a direct line like this, where it's basically it's like taking the volume fader and just evenly dropping it from one place to another. Generally, they sound better if it's a bit of a curve. So if I leave it up like this and then sort of gradually curve it down and then flatten out the curve at the end. I think that's going to be a more effective fade out. So I'm going to add a few more nodes here. I'm going to just have it coming down a little bit to there. So it'll be just very gradually that you'll hardly even notice it. And then here I'm going to have it drop a bit more steeply like so, but then it'll 
but then here I'll have it just last a little bit longer. So you'll hear it, you'll still hear it when it's very quiet for a little bit longer. And I think that will be a, a more natural sounding fade. So let's see how this sounds now. The next thing we're going to look at is another really exciting new feature, Realtrack Stems. In the Bootcamp 1 video, I used Realtrack Stems to add a three-part vocal ensemble to a modern country song. So I'm going to play a clip of that video right now, and then when I return here, I'll show you another example of Realtrack Stems. Now, halfway through the chorus, I do want something else to give this just a little more of an oomph here. It's the last chorus and it's a double chorus, so, so I want to just add something else. So what I was thinking, there are some backing vocals in this song, of course, that we've been hearing uh, for the last couple choruses, but I want to enhance that even more. Now, those were specific parts recorded for this song, but we also have vocal reel tracks. So I think if I add another vocal ensemble on top of this, then it, it'll really make it more of a choir feel which I think would be great for the last half of this chorus. So uh, I'm going to add a new track here, Utility 5, and then I'm going to go into the real tracks picker here. So I'm going to enter a filter here to find a little vocal ensemble that might suit this. So I'll type vocal and maybe I'll just type shuffle as well. All right, so it is still showing me all of the instruments that are in the style itself. But then with the filter added, it's also showing me these ones that have vocal in the title as well as shuffle in the title. So there's this three-part shuffle here, and then there are some uh, individual vocal parts like high one, high two, double, etc. So they're all gospel shuffle, but this one here is an actual three-part vocal section. Although it's actually six voices because each of the three parts is doubled. Now there's another new feature in Band in a Box 2023, and that is real track stems. So with the previous version of Band in a Box, we added real drum stems, and that was a very useful feature that allowed you to access the audio files for the individual mics that were miking the drums for our real drum styles. That was a great feature to be able to import into a DAW, and then you have the individual stems to do a full mix of your whole song, and you could customize the mix exactly to your liking. So that was a really great feature, but we've now added this new feature, Real Tracks Stems. So this is a little bit different in that this applies to these types of ensemble real tracks, like vocals or string quartets or horn section styles. So this one, for example, I showed you this real track here is the three part, so six voices all together. And then we had these individual voices that you could also access. However, if you picked several of these individual voices, they wouldn't generate together. So it wouldn't be, so they wouldn't be singing a specific ensemble part together. They would just be more or less randomly singing their own parts, but in different ways. With the feature now, we can select just this main reel track here with the three parts, but we can separate the stems in this area below here. So you can see here it has a mix, and then it also has the soprano doubled part. So this is two soprano voices singing here. The high alto doubled part, again, this one is two voices singing here, and the alto low doubled part. This is two voices singing there. You also have the options of just the very individual voices, so there are then six of those. So with all of these, the parts will generate together, so they will all be in sync with one another, and yet you have them on different tracks, so you can mix them differently, add effects differently, that kind of thing. So for this one here right now, um, I'm not going to select the mix, I'm just going to select the doubled soprano, the doubled alto high, and the doubled alto low. So these tracks are now going to load on three separate tracks. So I'll close the real tracks picker. And so we can see it's now loaded those three different parts onto three of these utility tracks. So I'm going to generate these parts, but then I'm going to go into the audio edit windows and lower the volumes for all of them so that I can just bring them in at the end there. 
All right, so I'm now just lowering the volume for all of those three vocal tracks. And now I'll go ahead to bar 97, which is where I want to bring them in. And the soprano. And let's listen to that coming into these. So, skyscraper swaying and the sirens are wailing like some manic saxophone. So I'm going to bring the volume down. I just want these to sort of be present but not overbearing. Peaceful night back home. I'm going to listen to that again. I'm going to solo the existing backing vocals along with those and see how those sound together. Get your feels. Yeah, so that sounded very nice. All right, so here's the very last chorus uh, in its entirety here. So much there, but it can't compare to a peaceful night back home. So there's another example of real track stems, um, and it's a file that you can open yourself. And it's in your main band in a box directory under tutorials, tutorial BB2023. And it's this file here, real track stems, crooner, jazz, horn section stems. So you can see with this file, we've already added the horn section background crooner big band nine part. And then these are all of the stems that go along with that. And you can see the button that would normally be a freeze button. It has this icon instead, meaning that the generation of this part came from the parent, which in this case is the horn section style. So I'll play a little bit of this and you can hear what those all sound like. So I'll play those first four bars again, and maybe just solo a few of the instruments. Maybe I will solo uh, just the saxes in there. So they've got their own part going there for those first four bars, but maybe then I will switch and I will solo the trumpets for that section. So with those eight bars, first of all, you had just a single trumpet doing a muted part for the first four bars, and then you had the whole trumpet section coming in at bar five here. So let me play all those together again with the saxes and the trumpets. And that part has all of the instruments. Now you can see there's also a flute here. Let me check out the flute track here. And I'm going to go to the audio edit window for the flute. 
So you can see the flute only comes in in certain parts. So let's have a, have a look and see what it's doing here at bar one. So that's a melody that the trumpet number one was playing as well. So here, I'll solo that as well. And I'll bring them all back in here. So as an educational tool, this is great as well because it really lets you delve into these parts and see what's happening in the different little groups. Another new feature is that you now have more control over real drums fills. Now, normally the real drums would always play a fill at the last bar of a section before a part marker has been entered in. For example, there was a fill there at bar eight because there was a part marker here at bar nine. So you now have the option both to add fills in bars that wouldn't normally have a fill or remove fills from bars where there is a fill. So I'm gonna demonstrate the first of those right now. I'm gonna add some fills where there wouldn't normally be some fills. So in the B section here, of course there's a fill at the end, bar 16, because there's a part marker at 17. But I'd like it to kind of go crazy here for the whole last four bars of this section here. So I want just fill after fill after fill, leading right up until the final fill here. So to get this, I'm gonna control click on the bar and I'm gonna select drum fill wanted for this bar. And then I'm gonna do the same here. And if I control click again, you can see there's now a check beside that there. And I'll do the same thing here at bar 15 and bar 16 is already gonna get a drum fill. There's already a check there because of the part marker at the next bar. So if I wanted to remove it, I could but I actually want to leave it there. So let me play that now. I'll regenerate and then skip ahead to this section and we'll hear how that sounds. All right, so there you go. It was almost as if there was a full drum solo here starting at bar 13 and going all the way to bar 16. Another new feature is that if you load a song file that requires a certain style and you don't have that style, Band in a Box will now give you extra help in trying to find a replacement style that you can use instead. So to demonstrate this, I removed the style zoom.sty, but I'm going to try and load the demo for that. So this here is the demo that I used in that last segment, Zoom Energetic Prog Rock, but when I load it, it won't be able to find that Zoom style. So you can see it's now prompted me to browse and choose from similar styles that I do have. So I'll select yes. So you can see here is that zoom style, meaning it wasn't able to find that style. But since that style is 4-4, even 16, 130 beats per minute, it put all of those filters automatically up here so that any other styles now in this current list will be somewhat similar to that zoom style. That info for Zoom, like 4.4, even 16, 130, medium rock, etc., also previously wouldn't show up for not available styles. So that's also a new feature. And I can also double click on it to hear a sample, another new feature for NA styles. <laughs> But now I can select another style from this list and I'll know that it will at least have a similar kind of groove. So maybe I'll try this one, Horns Heavy Modern Metal. Now this was the file I used in that last segment, so I saved it with those crazy drum fills in bars 13 through 16. So here those drum fills will be coming up but now playing with these different drums. So I have put that Zoom style back in the Styles folder, and so now I have to rebuild the Style Picker so that it will find it again. So there's a new feature with Rebuild as well, and that is this new dialog here. This gives you the option to pick different folders for your real tracks, your real drums, or both. 
So this means if you've installed Band in a Box on your computer, for example, but the real tracks and real drums are just being used on an external drive to save space on your own computer, you can now enter those custom locations right here when you rebuild the style picker. Previously, you would have to go to two different windows, one for the real track settings and one for the real drum settings. Enter those locations there and then come back to the style picker to rebuild, but that's now all in this one handy place. And for those locations you have selected, it shows you the current number of real tracks and real drums found in each of those locations. So I'll press OK Rebuild. And another new feature is a progress bar at the top. There are also new features in the real tracks and real drums pickers. In the real tracks picker, there's a new column for stems. We had a look at the real track stems earlier in the video, and you can see in the real tracks picker how many stems are available for any given real track. For example, this Duop Pop 8's real track has 12 stems available, and this Gospel Shuffle here has 9 stems available. And if I was to actually sort by this column, we can see they've all been grouped together here. And this horn section here, for example, has 11 stems available. This one has 10, etc., etc. Now related to this is a filter that will only show real tracks that contain stems. Now I know we've got them grouped here, but the entire list still has 3,720 items. If I was to use the filter instead, I could pick stems available, and then we can see there are now 39 items in this list that all have stems available. Sure is that you can now right click on real tracks within this list and it opens this handy menu with several options. The first item in this list is Toggle Favorite for Real Track. So if I select that, you can see it's put this little asterisk here. And I have a few other real tracks that have already done this too. And that means that I've designated these real tracks as ones that I particularly like to use and want to be able to access them easily. So for example, now if I press this Faves button, it gives me a list here that has those three real tracks that I've selected as my favorites, including that one I just did, the Bossa Lounge three part. And this list also has recently chosen real tracks as well. So that's a handy way to identify real tracks that you particularly like and, and would like to be able to access easily. And then you can do the reverse, just remove the check by selecting it again. There are some other items in this list as well, and another new one that I particularly like is this, Launch Style Picker Showing Styles with Selected Real Track. I'm going to show another clip now from Boot Camp 1 where I use this feature to find a style for a song I'm working on. So that one sounds perfect to me, and we made that real track with Brent Mason, one of the most recorded guitar players of all time. So I think this one here will be perfect. Now I also said I actually want to load a completely different style as well. I want to use a style that uses those producer guitars that I was mentioning. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this soloist here, and I'm going to use a new feature where I can control click on the items in this menu. And incidentally, this control click feature also now exists in the real drums picker and, and elsewhere as well. There are various options here, but the one I want to use is launch style picker showing styles with selected real track. So if I click here, it closes the real tracks picker and opens the style picker. And it automatically has this filter entered up here, which is that soloist guitar that we were looking at in the real tracks picker. So it's filtered to show styles that contains that real track. And so you can see these two styles here both use that soloist, Scuff 2 and City Life. The Real Drums Picker also now has this control click menu with many of the same things that were in the Real Tracks Picker, such as the Toggle Favorite. Band in a Box now auto saves whatever song you happen to be working on, which means that if you're working on a song and say, for example, your computer crashes and restarts, you won't have lost that work that you've been doing up to that point. So I'm going to demonstrate this right now. I've entered a few chords to a song here. I haven't saved the file at all, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to force quit Band in a Box to emulate a computer crash. And then I'll restart Band in a Box, and it's giving me this message prompting me to load the auto-saved song. And there we have all the chords that I had entered are right here. 
And we can see that this particular song was saved in an autosave folder in my main band in a box directory. But if I had already saved the song previously, it would have saved the autosave file in that folder. There are enhancements to the copy songs to text on clipboard or files feature. There are new options to use tab instead of the bar line character, which makes it a lot easier to paste chord progressions into spreadsheets. And there's a new option to use slashes for every empty beat. And there's a new option to show bar numbers for each bar as well. So with those selected now, I can go OK, copy to clipboard. And so now if I paste that into a spreadsheet, if I scroll down to the actual chords area here, we can see that each bar is in its own cell. We have the bar numbers and we have slashes here for any empty beats. There are enhancements to the Song Picker dialog. The Song Picker auto rebuilds for folders if there are less than a specified number of songs. This means that the Song Picker will show all songs including new ones without having to rebuild. You can set that specific number with a new option in the Song Picker Options dialog. So I have it currently set to 100, which means if a folder has 100 or less songs in it, it will automatically rebuild. If it's more than that, it will prompt you to rebuild if it's the first time you've been in that folder. There are new display options and enhancements, including the notification messages that appear at the bottom right of the screen, which are now smaller, occupying less of the screen, and they also just look better. And you can edit the flash message colors in the display options. There's a new option to be able to hide the red lines for bars that contain custom bar settings. For example, this is one of our new songs with vocals, and it's in 4-4, but frequently goes to 3-4. And so that's a bar setting, which means that it shows this red line underneath to indicate that there's some kind of custom bar setting for that bar. But if I go into this by pressing F5, there are new options here for those red lines. So I'm just going to say no. And now those red lines are hidden. The Generate Intros feature now has a new option to use chords from the current song. For example, I'll put a check here where it says Use Chords from Bar. And by default, it's just automatically put in the last four bars of my song. Bars 21 through 24 which might actually be a good option for this song. Many new items have been added to the Tracks right-click menu options, and I'm going to show you another clip from the Bootcamp 1 video to show you this in action. What I'm going to do is move this audio track containing the background vocals to a different unused track, so that we'll then get that guitar that's part of the style on Utility Track 1. So another new feature with Band in a Box 2023 is that there are new control click items right in the mixer. So I'm gonna control click on this track here, then I'll go down to Track Actions, and over to Copy Move Tracks. Now this is a feature that existed previously, but it wasn't previously in this menu, so that makes it a lot handier now. So if I select it, we can see that this area is already populated by Utility Track 1, since that's the track we control clicked on. And the destination, I want to put it on Utility 4, which is currently unused. I don't want to copy, I want to actually move. So now I'll press OK. And we can see now that it's moved, it's freed up that slot for Guitar 4 from the style. The What Add-ons Do I Have dialog now lists the percentage of real tracks, real drums, styles, and add-on styles with links to pgmusic.com with more information. So the last feature I'm going to show you is the new Live Audio Input Monitoring feature. So once again, I'm going to show you a clip from the Bootcamp 2 video to show you this new feature in action. Now I think the last thing I want to do with this track here that I've made is add my own little part to it. 
So I've got a, a fretless bass plugged into my audio interface here, and I was thinking of playing just a really simple little part that would go from the A minor chord to the F major 7 chord, and then the same little thing to go from the A minor to the F minor 7. Now, you have been able to record audio in the past, but now new features have been added so that you're able to monitor the input along with the effects that you have on the track that you're recording to. So I'll show you that right now. First of all, I'll add one more track here. And now if I go to the VU meter on that track, I can right click on it and I can go arm track. Now, now you, you can, can see uh, uh, as, as I'm, I'm speaking, speaking now uh, uh, that, that it's, it's showing up in the, the view, view meter, meter here. here. That's, That's because, because this track, track is now armed, armed to record. record. So, so it's, it's showing, showing up here, here and, and uh, my, my microphone, microphone is going, going through my audio, audio interface, interface so, and, and it's, it's routed, routed to come, come through right on this track, track here. here. Now, now you'll, you'll notice, notice that the view meter, you, you can see the, the top, top part of it is showing, showing but, but kind of the, the bottom, bottom part underneath it is, is there's, there's nothing there. there. That's, That's another, another new feature uh, with, with Bandbox 2023, 2023, and that, that is that all of the view meters now show in stereo. So right now my voice is only coming into Band in a Box on the left channel because, again, my microphone is plugged into channel one of my interface. In channel two, I have my fretless bass here plugged in. So, so if, if I, I play, play a little, little bit, bit on that, that you can, can see that the view meter is showing there underneath, underneath it because, because that's, that's on the right, right channel because, because it's plugged into channel two, which is coming through on the right channel here. So, so I'm going to add some effects here. First of all, I'll just add some reverb here. Now you can hear my voice now has a ton of reverb on it. But, but it's, it's not, not just, just those built-in built plugins. plugins. Any, Any plugin, plugin that I put on this track, track, I'll also be able to hear that. So, so for example, I'll put, put on some, some delay, delay here. here. Hello. 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 Echo. 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 <laughs> Echo. Echo. All right, so, so I'm going to leave this on, so I'm gonna leave this on, on so I'm gonna but I'm going to reduce it. I'm going to just take off the arm track here. So you can still hear me uh, <laughs> hear me now, but I'll take it off there. So there you go. And I will and I will only have a little bit on, maybe like 25%. Okay, so again, if I arm it, now you're hearing my voice. And if I go mono left to stereo, then you can see the left channel is now going into both of them. If, if I, I go, go mono, mono right to stereo, that now means that my bass is the only thing that will come through here. So if I play that, that will now be playing with those effects. All right, so I'd like to record a little part along with this. And it's not even a bass part since there is already an actual bass track in this song. It's just a simple little melodic part to transition between these chords. So I will now press record, check the VU meters there. And now I'll record. Hope you enjoyed checking out all the great new features in Banana Box 2023 for Mac. Thanks for watching and have fun!